Welcome to the video for section 6.2, Graphs of Other Trigonometric Functions. By the end of the lesson, you'll be expected to graph secant of x, cosecant, tangent, and cotangent. You'll also be expected to understand and graph translations of each of these functions. Let's begin with tangent. Please fill in the values on this table. Let's look at the graph of tangent x now. Begin by labeling your vertical and horizontal axes. All right, now that our axis is completely labeled, let's go ahead and plot a few things. Notice that when x equals pi over 2 and negative pi over 2, we have an undefined value. Why is that? If you recall, tangent of pi over 2 equals sine of pi over 2 over cosine of pi over 2, which is 1 over 0, so it is undefined. You cannot divide by 0. This tells me that there are vertical asymptotes at every pi over 2 value. So this is x equals negative pi over 2. And here we have x equals pi over 2. Next, let's graph at negative pi over 4, at 0, and at pi over 4. Now while it's really tempting to just connect these with a straight line, that would be wrong. This is what the graph of tangent looks like. Our graph will get infinitely close to these asymptotes without ever touching them. And this is simply one period. Really quickly, let's pull out our graphing calculators. Here is my graphing calculator. I'm going to go here to y equals and type in tangent x and then close that parentheses. Next, I'll go here to window. And let's have our window go from negative to pi, oops, and that would be the negative horizontal axis, the negative x-axis, that's our minimum, and have our max go all the way to 2 pi. Let's scale this by pi over 4, and now our y min, I'm going to go from negative 3 to positive 3. Quickly double check my mode. I'm in radian mode. And then graph. Here is our graph. What we graphed in class is just from here to here. So this is pi over 4. This is pi over 2. So this is where our graph stops on the right negative pi over 4, pi over 2. This is where our graph stops on the left. Each of these up and down curves is one period. So here we have half a period, one period, two periods, three periods, and another half period. With that, let's discuss some key features of the graph y equals tangent of x. So if we have a graph of y equals a times tangent bx, the stretching factor is just our a. The period is going to be pi over b, where b is whatever value is here. If you notice on our graph, our period is pi. Since we start at negative pi over 2 and travel all the way to pi over 2, this distance is pi. Our domain is not quite all real numbers. I'm going to write this in set builder notation. It's a set of x such that 
x is not equal to 2k plus 1 times pi over 2, where k is an integer. And recall, integers are positive and negative whole numbers, including 0. So negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, so on to infinity. Next, our range, if you notice this, these graphs appear to go up infinitely and down infinitely, and our range is actually negative infinity to positive infinity. We have vertical asymptotes wherever y equals 2k plus 1 times pi divided by 2. Again, k is an integer. Now the graph of the tangent function is symmetric about what? It, yes, it's symmetric. about the origin. So it is odd. The graph of t the tangent function is symmetric about the origin, so it is odd. We can see this algebraically, if you recall tangent of negative x equals sine of negative x over cosine of negative x, which is negative sine x over cosine of x, which is just negative tangent of x. Graphs of the cotangent function, here f of x equals cotangent of x. Please fill in these table values. You need to be memorizing how to quickly fill in these values. Remember, this is just cosine of x over sine of x. So take whatever your cosine value is at the given angle and divide it by the sine value at the given angle. We have one undefined spot here at 0. And if you notice, cotangent of 0 equals cosine of 0 over sine of 0, which is just 1 over 0. So it's undefined, since we cannot divide by 0. Now let's go ahead and label our axes. There is my labeled axes. And let's plot these highlighted values. Of course, at 0, we will have an asymptote. So that is just this dashed line, x equals 0. This is a vertical asymptote. When x is negative pi over 2, we have 0. When x is negative pi over 4, we have negative 1. And of course, we have these other values. So if you notice, it looks as if our one period is a bit cut off. If you notice, it looks as if our one period is a bit cut off. So let's go ahead and fill in some additional values for 3 pi over 4 and negative 3 pi over 4 and use the fact that these periods are going to be symmetric. So where is our next asymptote? If you sit at pi or negative pi, you're correct. Cotangent of pi equals cosine of pi over sine of pi. This is negative 1 over 0, which is undefined. And you'll find a similar result for negative pi. So there are the remaining. So there are the remaining asymptotes.
Now we can finish sketching our graph here. And there we are. We have two full periods of the graph of cotangent of x. I'm not going to pull out the graphing calculator this time since this is identical to the process for graphing tangent of x. Let's look at some key features of the graph of cotangent. So given the graph of f of x equals a times cotangent of b times x, our stretching factor again is a, our period is pi over b, our domain, not quite all real numbers again, since if you notice we have all x except any x that's equal to what? Notice this is zero, this is a pi, this is a negative pi. Our next asymptote on this side would be two pi, on this side would be negative two pi. So we want to exclude whole values of pi. So k pi, where k is an integer. Our range is from negative infinity to positive infinity. And our vertical asymptotes are x equals k pi. Of course, k is an integer. Now, the cos the graph of the cotangent function is odd. It is symmetric about the origin. Let's figure this out algebraically. If you recall, cotangent of negative x equals cosine of negative x divided by sine of negative x, which is cosine of x divided by negative sine of x, or negative cotangent of x. So we have an odd function. Let's turn to the next page. Graph two periods of f of x equals 3 fourths tangent of 2x. Let's begin by identifying several key factors. First, our stretching factor. That's this value multiplied to the outside of our function. So we have a equals 3 fourths. Since it is less than 1, this will compress our graph. So this is a compression. Next, let's determine our period. If you recall, our period is pi over b. In this case, b is right here multiplied to the x. So this is pi over 2. Let's sketch a little bit of this out, and that will help us determine the asymptotes. So as always, start with an axis. There is my axis. If you recall, begins right at the middle. So here at 0, 0. And then our period is pi. Since our period is pi over 2, half of our period has to lie on this side and half of our period on this side. That tells me that my asymptotes are right here and here. And I know this because this is half my period of pi over 2. And here is the other half of this same period. So my asymptotes are x equals pi over 4, x equals negative pi over 4. Finally, halfway 
between our asymptote and the zero value, we should have some other key point. So let me label this. This would be pi over 8. And on this side, it's negative pi over 8. Now the graph of tangent, if you recall, if this is my axis, looks like this. With asymptotes are on either side. So our next key point here should be above the x-axis. So at pi over 8, instead of being at 1, since we have a stretching factor of 3 fourths, we are at 3 fourths. And at negative pi over 8, we're at negative 3 fourths. And this is my graph of 3 fourths tangent 2x. I can continue on either side just briefly. So this is 3 pi over 8. And here I have negative 3 pi over 8. This pattern continues. Where is our next 0 going to be? If you said pi over 2, you're correct. So we have a 0 here and a 0 here. At 3 pi over 8, negative, we're at 3 fourths. And at 3 pi over 8, positive, we're at negative 3 fourths. And this gives us, and this gives us two full periods of our graph. Let's move on to the next example. Graph two periods of g of x equals 2 times cotangent pi x. Of course, let's begin by identifying some key values. First, our stretching factor. In this case, it's this value here. So it's 2, which is greater than 1. So this is a stretch. Next, let's look at our period. Our period is pi over b. In this case, our b value is this entire pi over 2. So this becomes pi divided by pi over 2, which is just pi over 1 times 2 over pi, or just 2. So we have a period of 2. Notice that there are no pi's attached to this value, but we are still in radians. We do not have a degree symbol or anything. So this is still in radians, and our horizontal axis should have no pi's in it. So if you sketch a horizontal axis and you include pi's in it for this period, you will be incorrect. Let's start by sketching our axes now. So this is going to be 2. This is 4. If you notice, I left myself a lot of space in between. So a single period of our graph is 2. We know that at the beginning and the end of our period, for cotangent, we have asymptotes. So let's sketch out these asymptotes. Here, one asymptote is located at x equals 2. An additional asymptote is here at x equals 0. Halfway between these asymptotes, we should have a 0 value. Now let's quickly recall the graph of cotangent here towards the bottom. If this is my axis, our graph of cotangent looks something like this. With asymptotes here at the vertical axis and then one full period after our vertical axis. So here's 
the vertical axis asymptote and one full period after the vertical axis asymptote. Now how high and how low will we go? Well, we go infinitely, but where are our next key points? They are located at the one quarter mark, which is here, and at the three quarter mark, which is here. This one being one half and this three halves. Let's label the vertical axes, negative two and positive two. At one half, we go all the way up to positive two. And at n three halves, we go to negative two. And there's one period of the graph of two cotangent pi over two x. Let's sketch out one more period. So if this is our asymptote at x equals two and our period is two, we just add two to this asymptote to get us here to four. And that is where our next asymptote is visible. Halfway between our two asymptotes, which is at three, we have a point. Halfway between this left asymptote and this midpoint is another key point. This is five halves. Halfway between three and four, that is the midpoint and this last asymptote, we get our three quarter point, which is seven over two. Now we can continue graphing by plotting this upper point and this lower point. At the one quarter point, we should be at two. And at the three quarters point, we should be at negative two. And I just noticed I marked these both incorrectly. There's negative two. There we go. Now we have two periods of this graph of g of x equals two times cotangent pi over two times x. Here's one period and here's two period. Let's turn to the next page. Graph of the secant function, f of x equals secant of x. How can we rewrite the secant function using a reciprocal function? If you said one over cosine of x, you're correct. So let's see what this looks like. Let's start off here in light gray. I'm going to quickly sketch out a graph of cosine of x. If you recall, it has a period of 2 pi. We can use this to sketch out a graph of secant x. What happens to secant x when cosine is zero? For example, cosine is zero here at this value. If this is pi, this is x equals pi over two. So let's see what happens. Secant of pi over two equals one over cosine of pi over two. And cosine of pi over two is zero. So this is one over zero, which is undefined. So here we end up with our very first asymptote. And you keep getting these asymptotes everywhere cosine is equal to zero. There are all of our asymptotes. Now at all these peaks, secant and cosine are the same, so at all the maxes and the minimums, Let's try this out for secant of zero. So secant, secant of zero equals one over cosine of zero is one over one, which is just one. So that would get us a point here.
Let me move these. Bear with me to save some space. Perfect. We can also look at, say, secant of pi. Secant of pi equals 1 over cosine of pi. It's 1 over negative 1, which is just negative 1, and that would be here. So the graph of secant of x looks like this. And there we are. How often does it look like this graph repeats? Here we have an upper part and a lower part. It's tempting to say that this is one period and this is another, but this graph and this part of the graph are not identical. So a period goes from here all the way to here. This would give us one full period. So this is negative pi over 2 and this is 3 pi over 2. That distance traversed horizontally here is a full 2 pi. So we have one full period here. Or we could say we have one full period on this side and one full period on this side. So we've sketched out two full periods. Next, let's discuss some key features of y equals a times secant b of x, or b times x. Our stretching factor is a. Our period is 2 pi over b. Our domain is going to, going to our domain will be interrupted by our asymptotes. Let's go ahead and label our asymptotes on our graph. This is x equals negative 3 pi over 2. x equals pi over 2. That's negative. x equals positive pi over 2. And x equals 3 pi over 2. So our domain is the set of x such that x does not equal any half values of pi. So pi over 2 plus k pi, k is an integer. Our range is from negative infinity to negative 1, and then 1 to infinity. And this is our vertical movement. Our graph moves vertically to negative 1. Then there's a giant vertical jump before our graph is defined again at positive 1. Our vertical asymptotes are the set of x such that x does not equal to pi over 2 plus k pi, where k is an integer. And the graph of the secant function is symmetric about the y-axis. So it is even. Algebraically, we see that secant of negative x equals 1 over cosine of negative x equals 1 over cosine of x, which is just secant of x. f of x equals cosecant of x. We can rewrite this as 1 over sine x. That means here on our axis, let's sketch a light colored version of sine x. There is a graph of y equals sine of x in gray. Let's use this to sketch cosecant of x. Similarly to secant of x, wherever we end up with sine is 0, so here at 0 and at whole values of pi, we have an asymptote. So this is x equals negative 2 pi, x equals negative pi, x equals 0, x equals pi, and x equals 2 pi. Again, these peaks will match up, so these peaks and these low points will be on our graph. And we have a graph that looks like this. If you notice, a full period again is 2 pi. I should make it clear that this gray graph in the middle is not the graph of cosecant x. It's only these pink graphs on the top and bottom.
So our stretching factor here is A. Our period is 2 pi over B. Our domain is the set of X such that X does not equal K pi, where K is an integer. Our range is from negative infinity to negative 1, then 1 to infinity. Our vertical asymptotes are located wherever x equals k pi, k an integer. And the graph of the cosecant function is what? Is symmetric about the origin. Is symmetric about the origin. So it is odd. Algebraically, we can see that cosecant of negative x equals 1 over sine of negative x equals 1 over negative sine of x equals 1 over cos, actually equals just cosecant of x. So we have an odd function. Let's turn to our last page. Let's turn to the next page of the graph two periods of h of x equals 2 times secant 0.5x. The function we can use as a guide use g of x equals 2 cosine of 0.5x as a guide. So let's start with an axis. There's my axis. I haven't labeled any particular points quite yet. So let's look at our guide function of cosine of 0.5x. So for our guide function, and again, I'm still using the guide, it's amplitude is 2, and period is 2 pi over 0 0.5, which is 2 pi over 1 half, or 4 pi. So let's sketch 2 cosine of 0.5x as a guide. And there's our graph of y equals cosine of y equals 2 times cosine of 0.5x. This tells me that my asymptotes will be here at x equals pi and x equals 3 pi. And our graph will look like this. There is the graph of h of x equals 2 times secant of 0.5x. Notice I eliminated the guide because I want to make it clear that I'm looking for this pink graph on an exam or lab. You can definitely leave your guide if it'll help, but make certain it is very light. Or maybe make it a little dashed line so I can tell this is your guide. So this would be a, a nice acceptable way of leaving your answer and making it clear that you sketched a guide first. So our period is 4 pi, our stretching factor is 2, our asymptotes are located at x equals pi and x equals 3 pi. Example 4, graph two periods of k of x equals 3 times cosecant pi times x. Our guiding graph here, our guiding function, 
is f of x equals 3 sine of pi x. The amplitude here for our guide is 3. Our period is 2 pi over pi, which is just 2. So this is another example where your horizontal axis should not have any pi symbols on it. Inevitably, someone will still sketch a graph with pi symbols on the horizontal axes, but please, please don't. Let's start with our axes and a quick sketch of our guiding function. So there is our guiding graph. If you notice, our asymptotes are located here at 1. x equals 1, x equals 0, and x equals 2. And I'm going to make it much more clear that this is simply just a guiding graph by making it a dotted graph. And now we can sketch our actual graph of cosecant. So there's our graph of k of x equals 3 times cosecant pi of x. Before we finish up for this section, let's look at some important factors. It's stretching factor. Is three. Its period is two, and the asymptotes are located at x equals zero, x equals one, and x equals two. This concludes the lecture for section six point two.